Welcome to a brand new episode of the Barber Shop. I'm thrilled to introduce our guest. She runs a 1.2 lakh crore assets under management financial services company. She's a mom, she's an investor and a shark on the latest season of Shark Tank. Please welcome Radhika Gupta. I say less IPs, right? I am the one who's competing with Zomato and Sweet, right? If you have 50, 60,000 rupees a month, please save some. And then people tell me, I don't have money for this. I'm like, you pay 100 rupees a month to Netflix. I'm like, you pay 100 rupees a month to Netflix. I get tipped off from this point where people are like, unless you in life are going to start your own company, you are working for someone else and you are not doing anything in yeah, life. Yeah, fully. That this year I have taken exactly one day off. And I'm not an advocate for these things, right? I mean, I know 70-hour work week got trolled really badly. <laughs> I was pregnant when I was 38, 30, 39 actually. And I was also full-time CEO. And believe it or not, I was Googling examples of Indian CEOs who were pregnant. I couldn't find examples because most women have conceived much earlier. Much earlier. Everyone's asking you, how is your kid after you've had a kid? Very few people are asking you, how is the mother? When you bought a fund, you bought a promise. So essentially, when you bought my product, all you said is, I trust you. I trust you, Radhika. I trust you, Edelweiss Mutual Fund. I trust you with my money. And so you're selling trust. Hi, welcome to a brand new episode of The Barber Shop. I'm thrilled to introduce our guest. She runs a 1.2 lakh crore assets under management financial services company she actually started her own hedge fund as a 24 year old founder sold it and in the company that acquired her hedge fund has risen the ranks to become the ceo she is a mom she is an investor and a shark on the latest season of shark tank please welcome radhika gupta welcome to the show first of all i would love to kind of get into why you called me the favorite podcaster you have met okay so it's not because <laughs> of you It's because of this. It's because of food, right? See, I love food. I know. And I love people who are relaxed uh-huh. because in the last five years, I've done countless podcasts. And <laughs> with due respect to all the hosts, <laughs> um, it's nice to be chilled. Yeah. And it's nice to relax. And sometimes people forget that women wear high heels. Yes. And you let me take off my heels. Go off. I, I took off my heels as well. Uh, but that, <laughs> that is not a heel. <laughs> for me, it is. No? So thank you for letting me relax. No, for sure. That's the whole point. The whole point of the show is to chill. Huh. Plus, you are in 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 you know in our in our city. I want to host you in in a city with with our fresh air and everything. So, I <laughs> well, I I I should not say anything about Mumbai's air. Mumbai's air is better than yours. Uh, But this is also my city my because I partly grew up here. So this is like and my parents live here. So it's like part my city. Today, did you see today's headline? What's the headline? Delhi uh, Delhi air quality improves to severe. Oh, but that is very good from hazardous. <laughs> yeah, good so work. It's an improvement to severe. It was, I think, the day after Diwali. It was nine nine nine. Well, it was not nine nine nine. It was way more than the. No, nine 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 is the top of the. Is where it ends, yeah. Okay. The needle couldn't move forward. Well done. How long are you in Delhi for? I came last week uh, for Diwali, okay. and one of the things I always do is I like to spend Diwali at home. So I don't do Diwali parties. I don't do all these friends and socializing. I have to do some. markets media on diwali because mm. i i just have to do it occupational hazard um but i like to spend it with my family like my kid is here he's 16 months my parents are here so it's just a family affair and i do nothing else i also really realized this before coming that this year i have taken exactly one day off what are you saying i have taken one day off and i'm not an advocate for these things right <laughs> i mean i know 70 hour work week got trolled really badly <laughs> but i've taken only one day off yeah. and so we have this concept of mandatory leave where you have to take 5 days off it's a anti fraud practice in many financial institutions including us so i took my mandatory leave last week which means i couldn't even answer email wow and it was fab and then i'm here for this week and i just came back from kanpur i'm going to jaipur so i'm doing branch travel across north india <laughs> <laughs> very cool no i um, uh, did very what did you watch the match I did watch the match. Uh-huh. Um I watched it at home. I was not one of those people who paid 5 lakhs to go to Ahmedabad. I know. Thank God, right? Or more or more lakhs, I think. Uh-huh. Uh, so the good thing I learned about the match is hospitality companies always make money. Uh-huh. Regardless of who wins, hospitality companies always make money. But I did watch the match. We watched it at home. Um Have you recovered? It, what? Have you recovered from it? You know, I my parents uh, were in Zambia when the 2003 finals happened. Uh-huh. And My brother, so I wasn't there. I had gone to Penn by then. But my brother told 
my father and he was ambassador ki agar india finals mein pahunche ki you have to take me you have to take south me. africa south, south africa, africa. Ah. so my father did all this thing and he took my brother ah. and they went and they watched that and we knew what happened oh, and i have heard those stories so many times so i think my family was thoda sa more mentally <laughs> they got the yeah but this is a match like unlike 2003 where honestly i don't we were the underdogs in the final yeah. this time we were i don't think anyone including me even imagined the possibility that i was losing we were so dominant which though. is why i think it's a little bit more painful yeah and i i, I tweeted something after i was like well in mutual funds we say past performance is not indicative of future results <laughs> yeah uh, sometimes that is what it is yeah. the other thing is i think if you look at india na indians are so passionate about cricket no one was telling me australia won but chances are Aussies are not that excited like yeah. they have 10 other sports they have 10 other sports is so much but for us like cricket is such a big deal yeah. that that's why these things become the events that they become yeah now i read some sad news by the way that they young people who have taken debt to go there yeah yeah which by the way you should never do <laughs> <laughs> Young people take debt for a lot of things nowadays. Yeah, but taking debt to go watch cricket in Ahmedabad is. But the, the the argument is actually sound. The argument is, this ev- this event will happen in India after twelve years. Yeah. We are twenty eight today. We will be forty then, so we don't know what life is going to look like. Right. Will India reach the final in twelve years? We don't know. So this is a once in a lifetime, or at least once in a. Once in a decade, dude. No, so once in a two to three decade kind okay, of. Okay, fine. Fifteen years. How that? That's that's a good argument to have, right? Uh, like you say, okay, I can take maybe two months of salary, three months of salary, and put it into a ticket. Uh, had had we won, everyone would have. Would not had would we have won, it would have been all good, and everyone would have been. You would have had a bunch of content creators posting on YouTube, <laughs> and then actually, <laughs> and you would have had all these people posting LinkedIn threads yeah. on lessons from the match. Oh yeah, I, I, drive I, me nuts. <laughs> I did one of those. Oh, you did one of those. I did one I'm of those. sorry. No, no, but I'll tell you what I did, and I want I actually want to take away from what you were talking about. So the day after the match, huh. I have a very cute caretaker, huh. so Morisa, huh. uh, and uh, he's just learned Hindi. So we converse in <laughs> in broken huh. Hindi, uh, but his fundamental job is to take care of the dog. Huh. Uh, and next morning, he just didn't wake up, and oh god, like he was, he's up at six o'clock huh. every day and takes the dog out. I had to wake him. I'm like, what am I going to do? Would you like to go and do something? I'll take her out if you're not well. Yeah, no. And then he came out, washed his face, and he said. Indian team को जेल में जाना चाहिए। Oh my God! I will have the next team reaction. And then I suddenly, I I was thinking about this, right? My WhatsApp groups on the phone were Probably. all about we played so well. Yeah. Everyone has an off day. Yeah. Move on. And I, so did I. Like I. Yeah. I, I, that 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 was everyone I was congratulating you guys played ten error. Oh, well, that was. Uh, I watched the match with uh. on a projector. Had friends over. We you know all of that, right? But um, I did realize that there are actually two Indias. There's the smaller India, yeah. which is take a bad day, move on. Uh. We have our jobs to go back to. We uh. have our businesses to run. Yeah. We have, you know, Christmas vacation to uh. kind of plan travel for. Right. Life is good, and we yeah. move on. But people like Gautam um, are living away from their families. His wife is in Odisha. He probably makes doesn't make as much money as as he would like, or yeah. his potential is. He's just kind of unlucky to be. born in a in a situation where he could not get educated has debt mm-hmm. right is taken debt because someone in his family fell ill and these are moments where there are like the, the few moments of joy a year when he can either actually have sweets on a festival or he can go and buy a shirt uh, and hence the reaction is a lot more extreme but that the, that is true of india actually I mean the, the economics. I don't want to get into boring economics. No, but, but that, that I would like to hear about that. See, India is not one India. Correct. There is an India that's like that, and there is an India that pays one lakh rupees a night to stay at Khyber and Kashmir, and you still don't get room. So there's about ten, twelve crore people that represent what I call India one or rich India, mm. and they are about half the economy. And effectively, we live a life of a developed country. Correct. And then there is a second India, which is the next ten, twelve crore people who will become rich India in seven, eight years. And then there is a balance hundred crore people who account for half the economy and live a very different world. In fact, one of my learnings in business was to stop believing that I am the consumer of anything. Correct. 
do you, but if you see china hmm. that bottom 80% mm-hmm. has kind of bulged into a middle class and the the osmosis into the top bracket or top two brackets is has happened over the last 20 30 oh, years. Humare, that is also going to happen do you think it's going to happen no, no it will happen you have today about uh, 120 million upper and middle income households today in the country mm. that will double in the next 6 7 years and you will gradually see that osmosis actually very little of india will by 2030 remain a very poor country and when you say very poor you mean below poverty <coughs> line below empowerment line you below empowerment line so very basic health care basic basic health care ho chuka hoga oh ho chuka hoga so this western myth that you had i think when one of the space programs happened is on the british press which i don't love said something like india is a poor country they should be building toilets why are you sending satellites to the moon you will be beyond the point where you say india is a poor country you still have issues to solve you still have infra to solve when you have bad roads in bombay and all of that but india will be be beyond the point of being a poor country i agree with that so mm-hmm. i have agreed with this for the longest time me being an entrepreneur fundamentally stems from this belief that mm. we are taking like we are all like enterprise policy government uh financial institutions will take the country forward and standard of living yeah. the average person yeah. will go up i have a genuinely re- and on this podcast at least 10 people have come and said this is the next 15 20 years is india's golden period honestly i believed in it for a long time uh. until like a month or two back where i was st- hmm i like there are and maybe these data points are few and far between and i'm drawing a line uh-huh. through few data points which one should not do but being pickinsy consultant we, mm. we are forgiven the mm. hypothesis driven thinking but for example like um i think there is you're right there's a 10 12 crore india then the next 10 crore then the 100 crore right and ideally that triangle should start getting thicker in the middle like yeah. it should bulge in the middle i just feel is becoming like an hourglass You know? No, I don't think so. You know, I've lived in a lot of parts of the world where there is no concept of a middle class. Like I spent six years between Nigeria and Zambia, and there is no notion of a middle class. I mean, I was at a World Economic Forum event talking to quite a few leaders from Pakistan. Again, the challenge is there is no middle class. But in India, there is a serious middle class. Now we read the stories of. X Y Z rich etc. I am not going. No, there, there is a solid sense of middle class, and if you look at each generation, I think the greatest thing in India that gives you hope is that generationally you are making progress. Correct. Every generation. Uh, is my economic. father's father was lower middle class. My father was middle class. I am upper middle class, upper class. God knows what. I don't like this whole thing. But every generation is making progress. <clears throat> Let me give you like like for example, right? I remember when. I was in school, and huh. my older cousin had gone to Infosys. This is maybe. And also, just one more thing. Huh. Also, having spent so much time abroad, I think the difference, even the other sign of progress, is that if you look at the early nineties or the early eighties, the life that you could have had in the US or UK, and I think about this because I moved back to it the other fifteen years ago, versus the life you had in India was a very different Correct. one. Correct. Today, the difference has converged. I completely agree. Access, Meaningfully converged. I completely agree. So we have access to the same products at one third the price, yeah. and services at one tenth the price. Yeah. So this ten crore Indians live like kings and queens. There's no doubt about it. Not even the ten crore. Yeah, I mean, so the ten crores. But if you look at again the nineties, my generation of kids, like we wanted to go abroad, we wanted to stay abroad. Yeah. Like nineties was a period where you married your daughter to an NRI. Correct. Right? तो बहुत मौसियों की शादी भी होती थी. Correct. उस टाइम में दिल्ली में तो बहुत common था ये. Correct. By 2000s, I think that started changing. Now it's definitively changed. Correct. For example, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you example. Right? In Infosys, me, uh-huh. 2000, me, they had taken 70 kids. Yeah. Developed out of engineering colleges, had a salary of three, three and a half lakhs. The CEO of Infosys then uh-huh. used to make 80 lakhs. Uh-huh. Okay. So the CEO salary to the incoming person salary was 25 times. Uh-huh. It's fine. Okay, okay. great. Um, the salary now CEO is taking. Oh, uh, sorry, Infosys is now taking. Multiple thousand people. Yeah, of course. Age. At the same salary, uh-huh. inflation adjusted much lesser. Yeah. Right. The CEO salary has gone up hundred x. Yeah. Right. So now, in like a funnel, that was a like a uh, like a very acute isosceles triangle, uh-huh. has become a very 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 obtuse one. Mm. And 
you look at consulting firms which we both represent yeah. right um let's take our example yeah this year the top cons- mbb or whatever yeah. it is has taken 300 business analysts in india yeah at at a salary of 16 18 lakhs a year yeah. some small salary it's fine it's a, it's a good salary it's a decent salary when i was joined the firm 12 <laughs> years back huh. our salary used to be the social the, the business analyst salary used to be 12 lakhs mm. so 12 has become 20 uh. or 18 or something plus bonus yeah. 20 So, so it's inflation plus 80% plus 80 percent in 12 years. But actually, by the way, Shantanu, if you're saying this for India, I'll tell you, US me starting salaries. I think they were fifty thousand dollars for the longest year. Correct. Starting start. Then, बहुत सालों के बाद they became fifty five. Correct. तो वहाँ भी यही हुआ है. No, the same has happened. But by the way, that's not a good thing. No, the starting salary for the bottom. Is, so the bottom has expanded yeah. at inflation salary. Yeah. But the CEOs or senior yeah. partners' salary has gone up by six to eight x. Hmm. I think. Yep. So if you're looking at a very small, like this hmm. MBB is like maybe two thousand people, oh, yeah. which is the smallest representation hmm. of those ten crore top people. Yeah. वहाँ पे भी अगर inequity इतना हो गया है in terms of growth, hmm. then if you take it extrapolate to the country, it'll be more extreme. So, are we seeing concentration to a to an extent where where we're sitting on a, where we're sitting on an economic time bomb of sorts? I don't think so. I think the reason salaries have expanded at the top is today. If you have to have a CEO of an Infosys or a CS or a, these are globally competitive companies, and compensation has become your an Infosys of two thousand was a very different Infosys than the Infosys of today's market cap. And to be competitive as a CEO, you need to compete with global standards so then so then that touch so then the global standards are <laughs> american standards right which then kind of they are global actually they are global but then but then the same issues like the homelessness in cities across the us that happened mm. the stealing in apple stores because mm. everything is insured yeah. so you just give it off and then people don't have enough yeah. to eat do you think that will trickle down to our society and again i i know this mm. in this whole we are hitting 4 trillion dollars yeah. of gdp and in, in this whole whole Bruha, I've just, I've personally started seeing. A, I'll give you examples also mm. why I feel this way, but this is one of them. No, so that doesn't worry me. If you ask me, and by the way, I am an India bull, not. So I'll give you my disclaimer yeah. before that. I'm an India bull for two reasons. I'm paid to be an India bull. That too, everybody will be cynical. If you, if you sell mutual funds, <laughs> everybody assumes you are an India bull. I'm also the daughter of someone who represented India from 1975. So my dog, my dad's product, like your product is Bombay Shaving Company, my product is Edelweiss Mutual Fund. His product was India. Correct. I'm a diplomat, right? So I've like been brought up in India. Like my house was called India House. I mean, so that I, I've been brought up in orange, white, and green. I think the one thing that worries me actually is if if there is an Achilles heel, it's that you have a lot of young people today in India. Can you employ them? Can you generate enough employment to Indeed. keep them meaningfully occupied? Because if you can't, this great talk of demographic dividend becomes one big demographic liability. Liability, I agree. And historically, we have been a services-driven economy. I come from a services industry. Services, how many jobs are created? Beyond point, can't. Create. It's variable increase. No, it's so variable. So what gets me excited is. Will this country have a real manufacturing boom, and can we create jobs? Yeah. And that, to me, is the greatest risk. So when you fight, don't yeah. channel this population, that's when you will have a problem. Yeah. I see hope. I have always like I always want people from Bombay Shipping Company, for example, to leave and become entrepreneurs and create hmm. jobs. Hmm. I feel like we have created directly three hundred jobs and directly two thousand jobs. I find hmm. it's a very small yeah. number, but hmm. I feel productive. Hmm. And, This job creation <laughs> mandate that the country is supposed to have, right? <coughs> But I see the I see younger people. Uh huh. Again, okay. I, I have to pay competitive salaries. Right. Of course, right? you so younger younger people's salaries are much lower. Right. right. Especially if you're not from the best colleges, uh-huh. etc. I'm I'm able to get good talent. At uh-huh. let's let's take a twenty-five year old kid from a tier two college, business uh-huh. school maybe, or straight out of design school maybe, fifty thousand bucks a month uh-huh. of salary. Okay. महीने का दस हजार रुपए जोमेटो स्विगी पे टेन थाउजेंड बक्स फॉर सिक्सटी थाउजेंड रुपीज आई थिंक सरप्राइज में दस हजार रुपए फोन की ई एम आई में जाएगा खाना खुद बनाना नहीं है हाँ लेकिन वो करना है लोन तो टैप ऑफ बटन हाँ क्यों दो लाख का लोन क्यों चाहिए एप्पल एप्पल का लेटेस्ट फोन चाहिए आई एम यूजिंग अ आई फोन ट्वेल्व 
I am using an 11 year old. You will not believe it. My husband was using an SE till <laughs> last month. Correct. So, वो चाहिए. हाँ. तनका साठ हजार रुपए की. Phone डेढ़ लाख का चाहिए. Correct. दो लाख का और loan चाहिए क्योंकि travel staycation करना हाँ. Greece में जाके travel करना के लिए. तो वो भी चाहिए. हाँ. But income aspiration is high. हाँ. Lifestyle is high. Savings is low. हाँ. And reality that if I want to be an entrepreneur to live the life I want to live. हाँ. I will need some personal capital to yeah. some kind of business at some hmm. point. वो नहीं हो रहा है. And this I'm talking about again the kids of this ten to ten crore. Yes, I mean I know this more than anyone because I sell SIPs, right? Correct. So I am the one who's competing with Zomato and Swee, <laughs> right? Correct. So I am telling you, if you have fifty, sixty thousand rupees a month, please save some. And then people tell me, मैं सौ रुपए की SIP पी नहीं करता. मेरे पास पैसे नहीं. I don't have money for this. Like you pay a hundred rupees a month to Netflix. Correct. Do you know there are forty crore people in this country who subscribe to one OTT streaming platform or do Zomato, Swiggy. That means they pay hundred rupees a month. They are. They can't start. There are four crore people in this country who invest in mutual funds. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So it's how, the same hundred rupees. How will you? How will we start jobs? How will we create jobs if the demographic dividend huh. is not saving up for building their own companies or saving up something to create something? कैसे होगा क्योंकि सब नौकरिया ढूंढते रहेंगे फिर नौकरिया ढूंढेंगे सब और क्रिएट कम करेंगे तो कैसे होगा बट आई हैव अ फंडामेंटल प्रॉब्लम विद दिस थीसिस नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू गेट इनटू अ लॉट ऑफ ट्रबल बिकॉज़ आई एम आल्सो ऑन शॉर्ट टाइम आई आई थिंक देयर इज अ नैरेटिव इन दिस कंट्री दैट सेस दैट इफ आई एम नॉट बीइंग एन एंटरप्रेन्योर आई एम नॉट एडिंग वैल्यू इन लाइफ हां दैट आई डोंट एग्री विद एंड दैट आई डोंट एग्री आई कंप्लीटली आई थिंक यू कैन बिल्ड वैल्यू Whether you not everyone is set up, and I I have lived both versions of life. Firstly, I don't believe entrepreneurship is about shareholding. What is I mean, it 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 just is not. Correct. And do you think Satya? We we have just seen what's happened over the weekend with Crazy, Oprah. You know? It's in. Do you think Satya Nadella is not building value? <laughs> so of course he is building value. Entrepreneurship is about building value. Do you think Microsoft is not creating jobs? Of course it's creating jobs. TCS is creating jobs. HDFC Bank created jobs. Do you think Deepak Parekh, because he chose not to start his own company or didn't have thirty percent shareholding, didn't create value? Of course, he created value. So I just I get tipped off on this point where people are like, unless you in life are going to start your own company, you are working for someone else and you are not doing anything in yeah, life. Yeah, fully. You have to be creating value. Entrepreneurship is about creating value. Whether you're creating it in an existing institution and in taking its market cap from thousand crores. To twenty thousand crores, or whether you are doing it from yourself, it doesn't matter. That, that I completely agree. With. If everybody goes off to create companies, who will run existing ones? But so, the ri- but risk allocation has to happen at some point, not at an yeah. individual level. Yeah, ri- <laughs> risk. किसी को factory लगानी होगी, किसी को दर्दनाक बनाना होगा. Because this generation has to do that, not at some point. हाँ. कौन करेगा? काम तो किसी को करना. ये नहीं बोल रहा हूँ कि आउटपुट नहीं. मैं बोल रहा हूँ कि कौन करेगा? हाँ. अगर तुम बचा ही नहीं पा रहे पैसे. हाँ. तुम हमेशा debt में ही हो. हाँ. तुम्हारा सेविंग रेट हैज कम डाउन बाय लाइक फ्रॉम 36 38% टू जनरेशन एक्चुअली अभी भी इंडिया का सेविंग्स रेट हाई है इन बच्चों का बच्चों का बच्चों का का यू आल्सो होप सी यू हैव टू आई थिंक वी आर वेरी क्रिटिकल ऑफ दिस जनरेशन यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट इफ यू लुक एट माय जन सो माय पेरेंट्स जनरेशन और आवर पेरेंट्स जनरेशन ग्रो अप इन एन इंडिया ऑफ स्कार्सिटी लाइक द 18 साल यू वॉच दैट मूवी 83 18 साल फोन लाइन के इंतजार करेक्ट Your and my generation, I think, grew up in an India of transition. Correct. We have seen that era, and we have seen abundance. The generation you are talking about has grown up in an India of pure abundance. Correct. And so the need to own that sense that if I don't have a, I need to have a home, otherwise, makan malik mujhe ghar se nikal dega. Correct. That isn't there. Correct. It's just a different, and I think perhaps there's less appreciation. And who's to say that when this twenty-year-old turns into a thirty-year-old, they will not become a saver? Who's to say? Yeah, I don't know. I, I actually. I, By the way, huh. at least this generation is consuming. Consumption is good for the economy. Ha, consumption is good for the again. <coughs> the money is flowing upwards. Yeah. The question is, debt is flowing downwards. Money is flowing upwards. They're con. They're absolutely consuming way more. They are consuming a lot. And they're they're borrowing a lot and they're consuming a lot and I'm not so sure that mm. you know that that is the sm- smartest thing. Yeah. This is one of those I agree with you. This is always a every generation thinks that then I sound maybe sound like an old grandfather like huh. our time. But I just it's like every start. every man thinks sorry no, no, that every man thinks that uh, you know 
माय वाइफ कुक्स डैम गुड दाल बट मेरी मम्मी जितनी अच्छी नहीं बनाती करेक्ट कुक डैम गुड दाल बट माई मदर मेड बेटर था सो द स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ दाल इन दिस कंट्री हैज डिटीरियोरेटेड एवरी जनरेशन विच इज हार्ड टू बिलीव नो आई एग्री कम्प्लीटली लाइक इट्स 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 it's hard but you your your i also think this generation you know even if starting salaries start out lower i don't think you've seen as many people turn young entrepreneurs so we see the stories we see the guys who are spending 10000 rupees a month on swiggy and zomato but never before have i seen so many young people want to turn to entrepreneurship never before have i seen younger ceos being created so that is also kyu karna i have been going to colleges for the last 2 3 months huh. selling my razors okay kyu karna mujhe karna kyu hai ha on to mujhe isliye karna hai kyunki paper pakadte ho ha paper mein funding dikhti hai ha net worth dikhti hai that to is the most broken shortest thing. shortest path from current to millionaire huh. is entrepreneurship that's what so karna hai ab kaise and everyone has access to Shark Tank and you know podcasts yeah. and yeah. In- information. Everyone can sound smart very quickly. Everyone, all these twenty-year-old kids, no, they sound and they they may be very smart. Yeah. So, but this, some of, more more of them are smarter than what was in my time or before, right? But the percentage of those who sound smart mm. is very high. And then I it just I'm, so I spoke to one kid. Okay, like I'm on my my third startup. Mm. I was amazed. This is a college-going kid. And it's scary, right? I'm like third startup. I was like, that's amazing. So yeah, I'm actually pivoting my third startup into a different business model, and I, I think the the consumer inside we had earlier was 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 kind of off. And you sound like a McKinsey consultant. I, I was like, you, sa- you sound like me. Like, yeah. you, you, sa- you I, I could hear those words because I have said those before. And then you suddenly scratch the surface, and the there was no business. This is all in the head. And yeah, sometimes you want to say like, कर क्या रहा है? काम क्या कर रहा है? Revenue है नहीं नहीं actually हो जाएगा वो Excel पे है. I'll, I'll, uh, yeah. It took two questions to get to the depth of this, but otherwise, you sound smart in social circles. You, your parents are probably very proud of you. Your parents have probably created the resource abundance that you live in, and that's the problem. Because then suddenly you have far more people drinking their own Kool Aid and no one calling it out. And and I think some of the I mean I'm super excited about the startup boom and the entrepreneurship boom, and perhaps you're going off topic. No, no. But my no. my my worry is. that we forget that building anything whether a career or an institution or a company is a work of a lifetime yeah. it genuinely and the objective cannot be funding and getting a paper valuation <laughs> because it scares me Correct. um the objective should, what is a company a well, company kya hai company is something that provides a product or service to a consumer Correct. that the consumer likes at a price which is good for the consumer but where the company can make money, money. and it is someone who can do this sustainably not a fly by night okay correct this is the definition of a decent going company concern. correct going concern that finally the people tell me what does the market value this is what the market value I, you create some product or service there is someone to buy it hopefully a decent group of people <laughs> they are ready to pay you a price because right. if you are doing it for free it is philanthropy it is philanthropy correct. and you can do that sustainably we have forgotten this in this whole this basic definition we have forgotten in a rush and i don't understand why we are in a rush yeah why are we in a rush yeah quarter on quarter growth you know that better than i know, know better than most people and you know we see comp- you know, even when companies come, there's so much hoopla about ipos these days ipos are just an event in the company's life yeah, yeah. company Work of a lifetime. If you look at some of the greatest, some of the top hundred companies in India, they still only have four five percent market share. They still have tremendous room to grow, and they're yeah. the top hundred companies in the country. Yeah. If you look at some of the largest banks, the largest watchmaker in the country, they have four five percent market share. Correct. In a market that is going to grow infinitely, so why are we in a rush? Agree. तो धीरे काम करो. And build something that is a last annual report for us. We publish an annual report, even though we are not listed. We wrote we want to build strong foundations for sustainable growth. And I just worry about this three years may come. There is no race. I agree. I agree. I agree. I think entrepreneurship is a is a is a tricky topic for multiple reasons and from a generational standpoint, right? So. 
I I saw I saw someone write this the other day. We had two IPOs. Yeah. So we had two we had two IPOs. Uh-huh. But one was probably a forty-five to fifty-year-old and multiple Gen- generation yeah. business. One was a hmm. venture-funded startup, etc. Uh, <coughs> and it's it it was very clear that you know that there 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 are two schools of thought. Yeah. Around sustainable, profitable. Growth, which mm. takes time, because nothing happens overnight. Nothing happens. Nothing worthwhile happens, happens overnight. Right. Things can happen overnight, but worthwhile. Mm. But there's another point of view, which is, hey, the world is moving at a speed mm. that we are not used to. And maybe the are, answer is the middle path. Maybe the answer is today you don't want to take forty years, but you don't have to do it in three. Maybe the answer is actually most of the answers I don't think sit at the extreme. Maybe the answer is you can build a distribution network today. You can use modern media. You can use technology. social media, content marketing, technology, all of that. And maybe the answer is you do it in five to ten years, but you don't have to do it in two. I mean, I think the answer is somewhere in the middle path. Yeah. Because the forty-year-old businesses were built in a very different India. Correct. You're building in a very different India. Correct. And I think the answer lies in the middle path. I was just talking to someone the other day. That I don't think people realize. The importance of debt in a business situation, mm. not from a balance sheet standpoint, right? But <coughs> more from a pressure standpoint. So, moment, so how would you start a business in the seventies or the eighties? Yeah, you take some loan from an uncle, yeah. or from a bank, or from That's a money lender. Did. That's what you did. Jewelry from the family, huh. holding hmm. to the person. Now that debt sits on on your head like a guillotine. Yeah. And the pressure of that guillotine on the business to create cash to service that debt is so high Aye. that the business automatically starts starts becoming generating cash. Yeah, but equity does not come with that same pressure. It doesn't, and I think frugality or doing business a certain way is a state of mind that is very important to inculcate. I mean, I I know this. We worked at McKinsey, and after that, I worked at a Hedge fund, and one of the things that always used to drive me mad in financial services is like we know that markets are going to move up and down. Like finance people, they should know this of all people. And the amount of expansion we do in good times, and the way we cut back in bad times, it doesn't have to be yeah. this cyclical. I mean, it just doesn't. I'm saying we can just build frugally all through. Like there's no reason as an analyst I needed to go home in a limousine <laughs> in 2007 and then not get a train pass in 2008. I could just live life in the middle path, right? Correct. So I think building with a certain sense of frugality, which was old traditional mindset of India, by the way, is actually very valuable. And once that mindset creeps in, it creeps into the entire culture. But it's so consistent across countries, across <coughs> age groups, across businesses which are small. So you, we are seeing forty billion dollar valuation businesses file for bankruptcy in the last couple of months. Well, there was a business a few days ago that filed for bankruptcy, and I tweeted about this. I was like, I don't know why not many people are talking about it. Was it Thrasio? It was Thrasio, mm. and it's how's a brand's model, and you know, I don't want to. There are lots of people who made the Thrasio model, so. Yeah. Them being bankrupt to me is big deal. Is a big deal because there were businesses that were saying, "I'm the Thrasio model of Venezuela, and I'm the Thrasio model of Pakistan, or whatever of yeah. X Y Z country," and it's a big deal. Yeah. And they raised about three to four billion dollars of funding, if I'm not wrong. And we celebrated the funding. We didn't question the fact that it's not a robust business. It's hard enough to build a brand. It's. Like multiple orders harder to aggregate existing brand brands. and create synergy, and in the and to run different brands yeah. differently, and you know we talk about risk in our business. <laughs> Is there single supplier risk? Is there single channel risk that comes with multiple brands? In this case, it was Amazon. But yeah. we celebrate four billion dollars of funding, and we don't question the robustness of business model. In an in an economy that where the depth of e-commerce is so much deeper than in India, so we, exactly if it was an if it was a red flag there, it's a bright red flag here. Yeah, so I I thought by the way that that was a huge deal. It was. It, it's happening a lot by the way. It's suddenly like you celebrate thinking of business models, but fruition of those business models into sustainable and again this and ability of those uh, business models to see changes in cycle, to see changes in economic cycle. of those entrepreneurs to show resilience and 
pivot or stay the course to say stay sustainability all of that is so what i get scared with two three year old businesses is you just haven't had time and you haven't been tested enough yeah it was always say the investment professional for a maturity aata hai na it's yeah. a cycle se correct it's someone who's lived the he's got a few beatings in life no i and those beatings in life i think are very important yeah but it's amazing how 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 human like very simple human psychology uh, kind of plays into organizational behavior or market behaviors and our investors are colgate radhika yeah. right? so uh, mukul who is mm-hmm. the asia ceo for colgate a very seasoned fmcg professional who had a very similar musing and yeah. he was like sitting with me in, in our office only and he like shantanu i don't understand this fence and colgate is like one of these cash machine businesses yeah, right because yeah, so efficient and focused and very like 200 year old company and like a brand it's successful. like a bar aapke colgate karna hai that to it's a ha successful business yeah तो ये मेरे को समझ में नहीं आता है कि हाउ हाउ डू यू गाइस रेज मनी एंड देन बर्न थ्रू इट एंड देन एट व्हाट पॉइंट आर योर बोर्ड्स यू नो काइंड ऑफ गेटिंग स्लाइटली नर्वस एंड हाउ डू हाउ डू हाउ डज एवरीवन डू इट द सेम वे लाइक यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एट एट टेक एट टेक वेल बिल्ड द वॉल एंड दिस इज एक्चुअली रिमाइंड्स मी ऑफ कंज्यूमर्स हु यूज टूथपेस्ट व्हेन यू गेट अ फ्रेश ट्यूब ऑफ टूथपेस्ट एवरी ब्रश यू हैव लाइक अ जेनरस डॉलप ऑफ द टूथपेस्ट एंड बाद में एंड बाद में जब रन में खत्म हो रहा होता है टूथपेस्ट का Then you're squeezing, you're taking only little bit, and then you're cutting it yeah, and taking out that last bit, which my husband does. It's damn annoying. This is human psychology. That when you are in abundance, you are wasteful. And so I, I mean, I keep telling everyone in our business, like in mutual funds, it's like let's just expand. Let's have hundred cities. Let's go from ten cities to hundred cities. Yeah. Why can't we add five cities like you? <laughs> Why can't we just do it? Because you know, with growth also comes the ability to manage growth. and i think extremes are harder to manage so if you grow very fast the the managerial ability the leadership ability the cultural ability to manage that extreme growth is something most businesses would struggle with gradual growth you learn you add five i just think it's good to go from 1 to 5 and 5 to 10 assess at 10 go to 20 and then plan for 50 yeah you can have a vision of 1 to 100 in your head but it doesn't need to be done overnight yeah people people use the word explosive growth euphemistically yeah. but the word explosive comes with serious risk it's explosive and you don't want, die and honestly even as someone who provides capital i don't want explosions <laughs> Exp- <laughs> they're not good i want sustainable growth yeah. not explosive growth yeah you will be rocket ship explosive explosive yeah. growth these are not shooting the moon <laughs> They are not earthly things. <laughs> they are, they are, they, they, this can cause discomfort to like people in 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 your world, which is providing capital, hopefully to create more capital at a return that is sustainable and providing capital to create businesses, managing public capital of people. See, people who are providers of capital, we are managing public capital. We are finally managing money of people who are giving hundred hundred rupees that will go into their daughter's wedding or some hospital treatment. to manage capital responsibly correct and we have to invest in companies that manage that capital responsibly correct 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 absolutely so i think this whole this new generation of ipos i'm again on this again i'm bullish yeah. but there's a lot of work that needs to be done including like people like myself like and people are right to say bombay shipping company is still loss making yeah why why have your losses not become profits yet your growth is uh-huh. uh, we are the number 2 shipping company in the country mm. today we are doubling every year all of that is fine yeah but again this is this is this is where the risk of drinking my own kool aid is very real right because honestly at some point roik will start will start not making sense and we can have the best products at the best margins and consumer love but if the business is not able to spit out cash at some point Public markets are not going to. Public markets will. And by the way, I I run uh, you know a fund that looks at newly listed companies, and I am very bullish about the fact about the IPO space in India because I believe in a country like India, there is capital that will have to find an exit, and that exit will come through public markets. And our public markets don't represent new age companies and yes. new age industries. Correct. Right. Our largest exchange is not listed today. Correct. So I'm very bullish about companies coming to. list and the market discovering new business models but i also think public markets because they are public can be very punishing correct and hence all this noise about sustain 
I've gone from running a loss making business and converting it to profit making ourselves because we were very small and yeah. now have gone through that journey. So law, being loss making is a part of your journey. It is of course. Correct. It's I think every company moves from a point where of course at some point only users should matter. Then revenue should matter. Then net revenue should matter. But at some point you have to move down the yeah. You financial can't, statement. You can't stay you stuck can't hang out here forever. <laughs> forever, I agree. There is a trajectory a company yeah. grows through, and you have to move down the track. You are always here. Yeah. Then and all, all the narrative is there. Yeah. You are talking about four billion dollars put into Thrasher, yeah. right? Narrative was narrative all there. Is here. GMB was here. <coughs> Brand was here. Multiples of oh. valuation is here. It's all there. But then, is 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 it trickling down to business creation of cash? and the believe me as in any industry as more and more of your competitors will list the narrative will move down yes so like there That's are so four or five listed mutual funds today if i or any other mutual fund were to list the market has established comparables the narrative in our industry has moved from assets under management down to profit profit and it will happen in as your peers list the narrative will move down correct you go from growth to efficiency that That oh, the trajectory is very quick. I mean, you can't start on day one thinking I have two customers and I want to be profitable. There's a problem there. <laughs> there's a certain amount of growth that is important so as long as you're moving down that curve. Yeah. And there's a line of sight. Like at, yeah. at some point, my CM will kind of correct become green. Then CM two will become green. green. Then EBITDA will become, become green. Become green. At this scale and so on. And then as long as you're treading that journey, I think you're doing well. That's and as long as you're as long as you're not drinking the Kool Aid. Yeah. How do you, how do you uh, now let me kind of mm. like switch to your you know more public recent mm. uh, endeavor as a as an investor in in in, in early stage companies right uh, under the spotlights uh, under But the spotlights I'm sure a lot of this will be helpful for people who invest in or even the people you guide who come on Shark Tank. But how what has been your investing model? Have you I'm sure you've been doing investing even outside of Shark Tank. But how how has that journey been? You see, it's it's a different journey. See, I have spent all my career doing. Public equities, and we run a small private equity and growth equity fund, but it's largely been listed equities. And my personal investments have always been mutual funds because, as a uh, public equities professional, you have so many compliance restrictions in terms of investing in public equities that you only invest in your own funds, which okay. is which has been my public stance. Ah, uh, but I think businesses are businesses. Ah, uh, and so private investing in that too in very Early, very, very early stage companies is new for me. Correct. Uh, oh, it's new for you, is it? It's it's very new for me. Oh, okay. Um, I've seen a lot of companies. I've seen companies at hundred crore revenue, five hundred crore revenue, because we have a fund there. But companies at this stage are very new for me. Oh. What I am discovering is that I think companies are companies. Okay. Firstly, whether you're looking at a small cap company that's listed on national stock exchange or a company that appears on Shark Tank. Management is important. You call it entrepreneur here. You call it management in our public markets lingo. Baat hui hai. Correct. You want to invest in someone who is serious about growing the business, who is serious about growing the business responsibility, and who is going to be fair to the investor. Correct. Whether you are a private market investor on Shark Tank or whether you are a public market investor, you want someone who will take care of their minority shareholder. Correct. That is number one. Now the importance could be seventy percent here and forty percent there, but it's important. You want a company to be growing. ये तो बहुत obvious है. You want a company to be growing, whether it is a consumer durables company. You want it to be growing, whether it's a restaurant company. तो growth is very important. You want a company to have some sense of unit economics Correct. in both businesses. Where you will be more forgiving here is that companies are still figuring out revenue models. They may be more loss making. Those are more established ones. So those nuances are different. But finally, companies are companies, so the questions are the same. Mm. But, you, but you obviously work a lot closer with uh, with with early stage investors, or maybe you have access to very on the ground business reality. You 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 look at uh, the on the ground business reality a lot more. You also, I think, have an ability to contribute a lot more, which is exciting. Yeah. Uh, and I think for me, and I know people will judge. My Shark Tank investments, um, <laughs> because I'm also an investment and fund professional, even though they should not. Um, but you also have an ability to contribute more, and in some sense, this is 
Shark Tank is, is, is a passion project. So I want to partner with businesses that speak to me. Mm. Where I have the ability to perhaps talk about that cause or that business or it's something close to my heart. So it's yeah. not just business. It's also things, topics, businesses that are close to my heart where my presence can perhaps be a positive influence, catalyst, etc. I think that's the different part. What is what 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 differentiates uh, the the founders of early stage businesses asking you for seed capital or pitching to you for seed capital versus professional management running decades old businesses where you are invested as a public market. Uh-huh. Like I'm sure there are things that are common. There are things that are like wide wide apart. Talk about both. So I think the optimism for your own business is common. Okay. It's 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 absolutely common. I think even if you talk of People who are running the top 100 companies or the top 200 companies in India, they're pretty optimistic about their business. And As I, an investor, do you find that difficult to like navigate through? Because it, I mean, you have to cut through, you have to understand narrative and also do your checks. So uh, we, we are always taught don't fall in love, listen to management, but don't fall in love with it. I, and I think that is, That's that is, well said, yeah. yeah. So you listen to management, you respect management. You partner with management, but you don't fall oh, in no. love with management. So it, it's it, unemotional. It becomes yeah, it's, it's an objectivity hitter. If, if in fact that that's actually much harder on Shark, Shark Tank because you see these entrepreneurs and they are some of their stories are so compelling. So I think the falling in love with management part is something I really have to take care of here. Yeah. Um, and it's infectious, no? Like it's very infectious. So I think that is there with. More established companies, I think there's a lot more clarity of path, uh, which which is expected. Here, people are still figuring out, yeah. uh, you know, the paths. They, they, they're still figuring out uh, the answers. They're still figuring out business models in uh, some cases. Some of them are not even sure if they've transitioned to a point where they've got a real business in place. So I think that, I think in terms of just getting the check boxes right, of course, established companies have gotten much further. One of the things I keep telling young founders is that build like you're building for an IPO, even if you have two crores of revenue today. So get your compliances right, be regulated. These things all carry you a long way. Yeah. So build the right way. That is such valuable feedback. We had to yeah. go through it because we had investors like Colgate and Reckitt yeah. came in very early. And, and they'll demand that of And they're public companies. There's no choice. They're global large public companies. So their audits and their requirements just yeah. forced us into good habits very early. Uh-huh. But it was, I've seen now, now I have a large portfolio uh-huh. personally as well and I see other founder friends and it becomes very difficult if you are not, and especially in a world today where corporate governance in young companies is now, we are seeing the results of it not being done well. Yeah, Founders showing bad form. Um, it's becoming so difficult. I think the listed world went through it maybe 20 years ago when patchy corporate governance used to exist. And it was even accepted in the public markets. It was? Well, I think in 2004, 5, 6, you could have patchy corporate governance or aapka, you could bring an IPO to market and then pay the price later. Yes. Investors would pay the price later. Today, the market will. The public market is past that. They know yeah. who's good and they... It's like that song, nah, I know who's been good, I know that Santa Claus song, yeah. I know who's been good and bad. Yeah. Public market has... Very smart that way, right? Yeah. It's figured it out because it has been burnt. It's not figured it out out of genius. It's figured it out because it's been burnt. burnt. In fact, if you look, I know a lot of the second and third generation world, promoter world, people who had historically patchy reputations for corporate governance, the second and third gen is coming Fixing in and it. saying... Well, I'm fixing this corporate governance because in trying to take out 200 crores on the side, I'm losing 2,000 crores of market cap yeah. in my multiple. Yeah. So the public market has learnt this. And I keep telling early stage guys, this is uncom- This is hygiene, boss. Yeah. And again, like I said, frugality is a mindset. Governance is also a mindset. Completely agree. Well, Once so you get into a bad mindset, then this is acceptable. Yeah. Right? I completely agree. <laughs> And hey, you know, yeah, there is no, we were talking to Avanish at mm. Matrix. He said, you know, honestly, there is no framework for entrepreneurs who come from families where both parents are salaried or yeah. you know, from agricultural backgrounds. Yeah. They didn't teach them. In school, in college, they didn't teach them. So, investor burden 
to teach and coach and role model is, is very so hard. important. I remember when I moved back in 2009 and see, in financial services, all businesses are regulated, but there is a choice to run life unregulated and do X, Y, Z. I think one of the calls I took then, and perhaps it helped because that came from government, was whatever we do, we are going to be regulated. Even if that means putting more capital into the business because we have to put in a lot of capital. Even that, if that means hiring XYZ, even if that means there's a cost of compliance, there is no cost of compliance. It's cost of doing business. Yeah. You have to do it. So that's been a very early belief. And I keep telling founders, check that box. But that's the thing, right? <coughs> Ingraining that very early on mm. versus a lot of, for example, families in India yeah. where dinner table conversations are around, around saving tax, yeah. cash economy businesses. Right? Kids who grow up in that environment. It's hard. The the, the DNA is not that this that is cost of this is, it's cost of compliance. It is in fact wastage because of compliance for all of them. Right? And it's not cost of compliance, it's necessity of doing good business. But in long term thinking, Radhika, like how how do we get younger like how would you how would you think about getting on, younger entrepreneurs? Because the price they pay for it very it's soon is very high. Very high. And, and you will see me talking a lot about this. You you will genuinely see me talking about this because I come from that world. Yeah. So you will see me hammering it and to a point where it's annoying because I know what it will cost you. Yeah. And by the way, there are a lot of young founders who as they're getting funding are getting this right. Correct. There are a lot of young people who are getting this right because they're realizing there's no point hiding from it. Correct. You know, India is getting formalized. Till 10 years ago, many doctors didn't pay tax, no? Yeah. Now, if, with GST, PAN, Aadhaar, everyone is becoming part of the formal economy. Correct. Correct. Yeah, I, think the, I think government push will obviously kind of uh -huh. filter that out. Uh -huh. Schooling. And then hopefully investors like you, for example, will kind of put pressure. Hopefully, I can give you my... I come from perhaps the most regulated industry in the country. Correct. Um, you know, every time I put out an ad, I have to mandatorily spend five seconds saying mutual funds are subject to market risk. Please read all scheme information documents quickly in a certain length. And five seconds is a lot of advertising time. Right. <laughs> and it is very easy to say, oh, this is cost of compliance. This is this. I genuinely think we've gone from a two lakh industry to almost a 50 lakh crore industry because we are transparent. I think we've become as big and as relevant as we are because we are transparent. It's very easy to say mutual fund sahi hai. It's much harder to live it. Correct. And living it, the living that sahi hai is governance, na? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's very important. I think the, uh, this is just something that has to be created, has to be formalized. Because still, like for example, we can say governance. Yeah. I still don't know what it entails. Yeah. I know that there is financial governance, there mm. is corporate governance, there is yeah. people level governance, there is posh. Yeah. There's a lot. The governance includes a lot of governance. Uh, governance is doing more than compliance is following the law. Yeah. Governance is following more than the spirit of the law. Compliance is following the law. Governance is following what is even the spirit, spirit of the law. Yeah. It is behaving as if this were your own capital and running a company that way. Yeah. That, yes. I think that is what it is. is if true. you didn't have any investors tomorrow, how would you run this? Yeah. Would you do any dhan? It is taking care of every stakeholder, whether it is the taxman or taxpayers in this country, or whether it is the environment, yeah. or whether it is your employees. They are all stakeholders, right? Correct. Correct. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. You are talking about getting people to sign up for SIPs. Uh, in the studios of Shark Tank, I'm assuming these are people who have certain amount of money, income, etc, etc. See, you know, the amazing thing is like, people talk about like, oh, there are only four crore mutual fund users, we have to go to like, tier three Bharat and all these things and <laughs> India, ho gaya hai, we have to go to Bharat to get new users, etc. Huh. You go to a Shark Tank set, right? <laughs> and you do a poll. How many of you know of mutual fund, SIP, etc.? So cool. Most will raise their hand because we've had things like mutual funds, IEA, all of that, okay? The so top of all is done. Uh -huh. <laughs> Consideration said, whatever all your fancy marketing lingo, you're done. Now, how many of you have done an SIP? Then maybe 10% will raise their hands. And this is true not only of a shark tank set. This is true in your housing society. This is true in most college alumni groups. Everywhere, and this is 
in film city in Mumbai, huh? I am not talking about some tier 4 town in Odisha. I am not talking about that. And what stops you? You know that SIP exists. You know it's good for you, but like, bad me karte. You'll, sub you'll sign up for Netflix now, but eh, bad me karte. And that's when my team was there, actually signing people up. And people don't get that SIP is not about bad me karte. Baad mein karenge is completely contrary. Baad ke liye karenge. Aaj karoge to baad ke liye. It's default gratification. And the point is you buy into the market at different points so you hedge risk. And you start early. Yeah, you start early. You start <laughs> early. And then they're like concert fund and then all of course, you know, we're helping them with all of that. But it just... But hai na yaar, India mein kitne saare to finance influencers hai. Compounding mein to 50 lakh videos hai. India has 1 lakh registered mutual fund distributors and financial advisors who are professionals to help you with this job. Then what's going on? Like, why aren't we converting that bottom of the funnel? Look, what's yeah. happening there? I tell you, it has gotten better. I think in the COVID boom, because so yeah. many fintechs came into the market, awareness got better. It's gotten better. So, like, in my papa's time, investment meant going and doing a Dakhana certificate, like a national savings certificate. Now, at least India has an equity culture. So, if you look at younger people today, they know about stocks, etc., etc., they, unfortunately, actually, they become too clever. So we talked about being in a rush to build companies. People are in super, like, glamorous is good. So we have probably 12 crore Dream 11 or those <laughs> equivalent users. We have 10 crore crypto users in this country. We have less than 4 crore investors. And we're because it's far more cool to be a crypto consumer and see my money double overnight than do a gradual SIP. Yeah. So glamorous is a lot more sexy. Boring is harder to sell, but boring is good for you in the long term. So we have to sell boring. So it's a hard job to sell boring. That's it's very surprising. Like it's very surprising that the reality of buying into equity markets in a growing country over a thirty-year career. Uh -huh. If you start at twenty-four, yeah, what that means, like Anuj, my like he's one of my closest friends. He runs. He he kept doing workshops. He did uh -huh. one here. He did one with like a lot of founder friends. Uh -huh. of mine. office was jata hai. And with their younger employees, hmm. he does a two-hour session on hmm. why investing like You want to have these many kids, you want to get yeah. them married, you want to get the, this much more edu education, your partner and her or his family and your family and medical requirements, you need a corpus at some yeah. point. And imagining that hmm. and then backtracking a plan is A, boring, yeah. but B, it's also, it's also the kind of work you don't like to do. Yeah, it... it, it but which is why, why do you think you have to do it yourself? There's help out there. So I keep saying there's help out there. Yeah. Now, uh, getting a knee surgery is kind of painful, right? But yeah. there's help out there to get yeah. a knee. Doing your taxes sometimes is work, but there's help out there Correct. to do your taxes. Solving a legal case, there's help out there. There's help out here too. Yeah. And there's good help out there. Use the help is what I keep saying. And please make an attempt. And today I think the digital world has made this stuff so much easier. But yeah. I mean, I, I keep, uh, the good side of this is, that's why we have a job here. Spreading financial education, I think, is just like, is God's work in some way. It's crazy, but like, I have a friend of mine, she's like a top investor at a, at Ernie, the top VC fund in the country. Huh. Personally, where is the FD? Why do we, this is, cross. this is very common. I met a president at one of the top 10 largest companies in India. He runs a very large VC portfolio. His money is in a bank savings account. What are you saying? He's like, I didn't have time. I mean, you have time to watch Bombay Begums or whatever you watch, <laughs> right? And you don't have time to do this. That's, so that so then it's not an education issue. It is. So in a certain segment, it's an education issue. In a certain segment, you can't even generalize. In a certain segment, it's an inertia issue. In a certain segment, it's a fear issue. There are still people who ask me, how do you know someone will not take away my money? India has had a long history of fraud also. So the issues are very complicated and nuanced. But we have to work at it, work at it, work at it. I told my, I told, I, told, I, told, I, told, I, I think the fact that people even know now, at least they raise their hand when I say SIP. At uh -huh. least they know that it exists. Before 20 years ago, it was like, what is this? What is, I agree. So at least we made that progress. So I also like to count my blessings. Now we have to make the conversion progress. Well, I sometimes wonder that there, see, if you go on Instagram, Finfluencing is um, probably among the top three themes on social media content. Yeah, and that bothers me too. Right? I, there's enough people talking about it. 
which again same thing everyone wants to sound smart by being a crypto investor i again met this 20 year old kid a lot of that content and look there are great influencers out there so let sure. let me let me not bash them but a problem in us a lot of that content is exactly that it is sensational how to double your money overnight five stocks that can make you you don't need to know all this most people need to start a basic sip in some fund and hold on to it for 10 years yeah. they don't need all those videos so <laughs> we have to sen- i mean the content can't be sensational yeah i agree I agree. Everyone wants to hit a six. Yeah, yeah. But doing the regular defense is a problem. Doing the, I mean, you say, yeah, who can? Is singles mar raha hai? I mean, there was that ah. World Cup match. We were like, who singles mar raha hai? There's, there's no maza. But investing is actually about. Yeah. Even Swap building forward. companies is about hitting singles. Absolutely. No, I'm again. I'm. I'm really hoping though. Oh, you know, now zero to download. Because you can just start invest. Many, so many people here. Huh. Why do I have mutual fund? I do. I will choose myself. Na? I will choose the stock. Yeah. I am. Because then you can go to a cocktail party and say I picked that stock and oh you didn't pick it. But you know, saying I did an SIP is not an interesting story to show off about. Correct. But I mean, show off about other things. Don't show off about this. Yeah. And most people, by the way, who do things on their own, and I'm not hitting on them. I keep I get trolled for this. But most people who do things on their own don't even calculate their returns. Yeah. They don't even know if they've done better. Yeah. People who sign on for their self investing, yeah, the average life cycle in 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 these situations is one one and a half years. Yeah, so most people don't. Mutual fund is five years. Ah, so they don't. Most people don't even know, and most people will only talk about their winners. But that is okay. So we keep we keep talking, we keep signing up people for anywhere we go. We are signing up SIPs. It's amazing how we compromise financial security for instant social gratification through conversation. Why are I, I even have crazy, a, no? I have a formula for people like this for young people. I am telling them live an eighty twenty life. Okay. See, eighty eighty percent of your money, please be responsible. Do all the financial security, all the boring stuff. Insurance. Right? Because sense. Ha, ha. Do your term insurance. Get your health insurance. Do your SIPs. Hmm. Secure your future. Twenty percent, you do your social Sugar credit certification. <laughs> It's like I can't tell you to eat dal chawal, you know, yeah, all, all day. You have to eat out, na? Correct. So I tell them limit that pos- instant gratification to twenty percent of your life. Correct. Correct. Um, coming to like, I wanted to like kind of switch gears a little bit and um, talk about something that again I have been, I was just telling the team that I have come into this podcast in a mood that is very different from my other mood, and you are the perfect foil for it because okay. I'm not sure if that's a compliment, but it's all anyway. fully, fully. Okay. I, I, huh. I think you're, you're. It doesn't you're, have to be a compliment. No, no, you're open. I'm good with trolling. You're open and you're objective. Huh. So that's a great thing because. Uh, If we if we if we knew each other etc then mm. you know we would have enough we would have baggage to the conversation yeah. this is fresh which is great now I want to talk about uh, something that I have like spoken to younger women about a lot more over yeah. the last few months and it's got me thinking about the social fabric of Gen Z in the future yeah. but I wanted to start off with being a mom uh-huh. uh, as a CEO later on and of course uh, you have spoken about it at length uh, publicly as well but talk about Talk about the choice and talk about if you would have done, would you have done it differently in terms of physical burden, etc. So, of course, being a mom is amazing. Yeah, it's just, it's just awesome. Like I'm going to run after this and go see my kid. Mm. It's, it's it's awesome. I think it's. I've spoken about this in parts. It's a complicated journey. It's it, it's really been a complicated journey, and it's a complicated journey for most women, right? Um, so I. Started when I moved back from India, ah, uh, from the US to India. I was an entrepreneur. When was this? 2008. So I moved back in 2009. 9. I was 24, 25, and then five, six years we spent building forefront. And I was very clear then that you know no kids because you're an entrepreneur. You live a scrappy life. I mean, you know this. Were really. you married then? I was married. So you uh, married early. I married very early. I was married when I was 23, 24, which is very young, right? I was dating my husband when I was 19. What's his name? Nalin. So right. Nalin and I started dating when we were nineteen. Oh, uh, wow, so cute. Financial. We we started the company together. Okay. But I and at, at that point, interestingly, a lot of my uh, Watton cohort was getting pregnant and having kids. Okay. Um, so there was always like, oh, they're going to the baby showers and they're having kids and all of that because when you have kids, you move into a different zone. Um, so it was a very contrary and choice to not like not be part of that zone. And I haven't spoken about this. And then, but then we sold the company to Edelweiss, etc. I was busy building within 
and then we tried to uh, have kids. When and was this? This was around 2015, 16. Okay. So few years, uh, it was about 10 years ago. And not very late to have kids, 32, 33. I mean, it's common these days. I had miscarriage one. Uh, I handled it. Wasn't great, of course, miscarriage is not good for anybody. Anyway, it's okay. Miscarriage two happened. And that was really tough. Like I remember, and it happened on my birthday. I think I was told I was going to miscarry on my birthday. So I was like in a hospital the night of my birthday. I mean, it was oh, really crappy. And the social stigma attached to these things is so bad that I never spoke about it, which is a big regret I have. So like, I remember my boss called me the night of my birthday and I was in the hospital and I didn't tell him and he was such a nice guy and it was so stupid and I came back to work after my procedure, the DNC that happens and I didn't tell anyone. Like, how dumb is that? I was going through a lot and then decided to just park this aside for a while because I was just not mentally there. I had had two miscarriages and... In India, nobody talks about this thing. So anyway, to end my chance, I became CEO. So I went through that whole CEO journey and I was building Edelweiss Mutual Fund. And at that point, did you guys give up on having a kid? Or did you say, okay, we'll park this for now when we get physically healthier or in a better place? To be honest, I wanted to park it aside. Um, and I was just like, I, I don't want to visit this space. It's it's bizarre. It's just like, I, I don't want to visit this space. Maybe there's imagine. fear. Um, and then we decided uh, to have a kid a few years later. It's uh, well, 37, 38 when we started having that discussion and it is complicated. Fact is, fertility has come down. Again, a not spoken topic, fertility has come down over generations. So, I mean, any doctor will tell you that. And we went through the process of conceiving. Medically or medically? Medically. Okay. Medical science will tell you that fertility has come down. I mean, the number of IVF clinics in this country exist for a reason, right? Um, and uh, finally, we had we had, we had had our son Remy last year. But I was pregnant when I was 38, 30, 39 actually. And I was also full-time CEO. And believe it or not, I was Googling examples of Indian CEOs who were pregnant. Because if you look at most Indian CEOs, not founders, because as a founder, you have a little bit more control over your schedule. As a CEO, you know, you're reporting to a board, your company is it was 90,000 crores by then. It's not a small business. And I couldn't find examples because most women have conceived much earlier. Much earlier. I could not find examples. Then I found one example, which was of Mar Marissa Mayer of Yahoo. <laughs> she was a sitting CEO when she had kids. And I was like, yes, she can do it. I can, I can do, do it. it yeah. And that was actually my process. It's, it sounds bizarre. Then I had my son. Nobody prepares you for having a kid. Women are judged so much as mothers. Like, I joined all these mommy WhatsApp groups and I've never been part of them. And they're almost therapeutic for women because your mother-in-law is judging you, one society auntie is judging you. Very few people go and ask. Everyone's asking you, how is your kid after you've had a kid? Very few people are asking you, how is the mother? So like the fourth trimester, which is the three months after conceiving, for me, was the toughest. And then I actually went to a psychologist. I discovered this whole postpartum thing. You had I, that? I did. I had serious. I mean, uh, for a woman who runs, uh, and again, not something I've spoken about too much, but for someone who runs a company with many employees, like I would have a mental breakdown like if my cleaning staff didn't turn up to work. Like I would have an emotional breakdown and cry for a day. And you had to do it privately. Cause I was doing it privately. Just was not talking about. Then I spoke, got help. My mom got involved, and I went through this journey. I returned back to work very early. I started working three weeks after my son. I started going to work six weeks after my son. Um, and my boss asked me, "He's like, why are you coming back to work? You can take all the leave you want." And I said, "I'm not coming back because you guys need me. I'm coming back because I need you. I need you. Because for 17 years of my life." All I have done is work, 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 corporate sector, growth, numbers, etc. And suddenly I'm talking about diapers and babies and breast pumps the whole day. Then I, I just can't do this. So I need to come back to know. And I think different people have different ways of coping. You know, 
<coughs> there was a lot of judgment at that time why is she coming back to work after 6 weeks and i was like regardless of what i do i will be judged if i take 6 months off i'll be lazy if i come back in 6 weeks i'll be setting a bad example and feminists will be angry with yeah, me yeah there's nothing you can do right there is no formula i mean my example is not an example everyone goes through a different journey has a different coping mechanism really and everyone takes a different amount of time to come out of it also some people just bounce back like this and some people have postpartum some people have it for 2 months and some people have it for one year thank you so much for sharing right i think that I, i i genuinely deeply appreciate it um because you're right a lot of people don't talk there's a lot of maternity knowledge a lot of community etc there are lots of parenting books correct but people don't talk they about they put pressure on women for the smallest things like this question of feeding should you and you are a guy so i don't know how much you'll get this but should you breastfeed your child or should you give the child formula is like such a big debate and the woman is almost criminalized if she can't breastfeed the kid enough and there's so much pressure on a mother's health i mean i had a cesarean so anyway walking is a big problem like laughing with stitches is a pain or coughing with stitches is a pain but there's so much pressure and there's so much judgment uh and this is why i started sharing some of the stories of getting back to work on social i actually still have girls coming to me at airports and saying i'm 33 34 should i have a kid and it creates fear among i mean i don't know if that was your question but it creates no, fear among women that should i go through this because you almost have made it you have almost made someone believe that i can't do both together yeah no i agree it's actually creating a lot of confusion in in younger women there is one element of should i have kids etc right there's a second pressure of almost feeling obligated yeah to have a professional life that you can choose over uh-huh. having children yeah right so women like i think now it is well documented that the age of giving birth mm-hmm. and the slope of professional growth mm-hmm. independent of industry yeah probably coincides they do because it's your 30s 30 to 35 it's your 30s right? and you have to make a choice yeah. now women who are who with you know with self respect dignity ambition yeah often times feel have started feeling that choosing family or choosing child bearing uh-huh. actually means that my career is not good enough and i i disagree i'll tell you a conversation i had i disagree that you have to make a choice you may have to make a temporary choice you know my boss told me i i think my boss has told me some amazing things in my pregnancy but One thing that one uh, Venkat who's a co-founder of Italo has told me is like six months is a big event. A pregnancy is a big event in the life of a woman personally, but six months is not a big event in your career. It cannot be. Yeah. And you always have to remember yeah. that. And he also told me, by the way, that being a mother will be will make me a better leader. He said, if I were to send you to Harvard to get six months of executive education, I would do it. I would do it right and nobody would say oh she's taking time off. Yeah. He's like I I I give it to you in writing that motherhood will make you a better leader, right? And so I think you have to see it very differently. I also think that for women who are considering the choice, we don't have enough honest conversations with people around us and we don't seek help because we've been taught ke sab kuch to hame hi karna hai, right? So we don't go and ask. I promise you today, if you are going through and most of our leadership who are women have gone through pregnancy at the time of holding cxo roles if you go and ask for support you will get it you know i never discussed maternity leave with my boss i just never did when never discussed how long i was going to go on maternity leave he never asked me it just happened there's enough trust and i think people are willing to give you that yeah Yeah, you don't get what you don't ask for. I you don't get what you don't ask for. So please. But the conversation is so important. So I'll tell you. I'll give you. I'll give you a slide. Maternity. It, we this topic now of maternity is something that is avoided. Yeah. So it's still backroom conversation. You think so? How it's many fine. girls in your office have a miscarriage, 
and are privately going through. I've seen it in my office, <coughs> going through it and sharing it. Yeah. They'll tell one person in HR, and they'll be low. It may affect their work. They may be going through something. The rest of the office is judging for them. But because it's a social taboo, we will tell nobody. How many? So it happens in every office. And yeah, I, I, you're right. As 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 someone who is a man and someone who is not, I, I'm not a father. Uh -huh. For me, it's not natural to think about it. Yeah. As you know, as as an employer or as a CEO or as a colleague, it doesn't come naturally. I want to like bring it to a, a, a different point of view. Right? There was a there was a woman younger to me, uh -huh. uh, high flying career. Yeah. Okay. The best schools, um, best jobs, like just top of the class, etc. Mm. Uh, at 30, mm. 30, 30, some few years younger to me. She like, you know what? I actually, actually, I'm going to tell you this very privately. Mm. I actually don't want to work mm. and I want to be a mom. Mm. But I'm afraid mm. of saying that. Because someone will judge me for because it. Because I feel like I'm letting down the whole community of women who mm. have fought hard to actually not be a yeah. choice. You know, I listen to Radhika and I listen to Vani and I listen to Vinita yeah. and I listen to Kiran and I hear all of them have built out these amazing careers and I have been taught by these great colleges and I have been role I have role modeled these amazing bosses who give me all this this, this teaching and I have so much privilege. Yeah. I don't want to do any of it. I actually want to be a mom and I don't know whether I can and I'm like that's I never thought about it that way. We always feel we want to give them Freedom and we have to empower women. Yeah, and I think finally you should make your own choice. But it's hard, right? It it's is hard. hard because women are judged for every single thing, right? If I'm too ambitious, then I'm a bad mother. And if I'm staying at home, I'm giving up opportunity that should have gone to someone else because I got an IIT degree or a Wharton degree or XYZ and now I'm sitting at home. And I'm saying finally you have to live a life that gives you happiness. How how does one do that? Like how does how does what I think about women and it's just so much more complicated than men. Like, mm. Maybe I'm at an age where yeah. I'm also talking to more women at different age groups. Mm. Right? I'm talking to someone who's fifty also and who's twenty five also, right? I have realized I today I realize that fertility is going down. Mm. I thought it's a social thing more than a medical, yeah, thing. Yeah, a I, medical I, thing. Today I realize it's a medical thing. I've also heard that menopause, the age of menopause is coming back. Like yeah. women are hitting menopause in their late thirties, early forties. Well, it's all fertility, right? Periods start earlier. You oh, so that's so the whole cycle has moved. Oh. It it now should tie up. The whole cycle has moved. Periods start early because of. Periods start because early of, because the the girl has become a lot more aware because of information. Whatever it is, periods start earlier. So that means your fertility cycle has all advanced. And there's a fixed. And there's there's a, fixed. There's a life, and. I'm not a medical professional, yeah, but this, this is what one hears and this is what one sees. So there is there is that. Then there is this whole, I don't know whether it's a false choice or a choice uh -huh. between professional. Then there's a timing issue. Yeah. Then there is a social issue with mother-in-law, father-in-law, partner. And parent. I think, by the way, that, but you know, I have lots of women who are also 25, 26 and I try to talk to one of them a week. Just random people who like connect with my office and want to do a conversation and they ask random questions over 15 minutes. You know, the most common question is, what kind of partner should I have if yeah. I want to be ambitious? I think this is a conversation you should have with your partner. Imagine random women are asking me, what kind of partner should I have if I'm an ambitious woman? And this is a conversation you should have with your partner and your in-laws. Yeah. What's the answer? What do, you, what do you tell them? I, th I tell them exactly this. I'm like, articulate your ambitions because it's an important choice. It's an important part of the choice, right? Yeah. Articulate your ambitions and what you want because you have to agree on this. Yeah. Or at least you have to find some common ground or you have to know that you disagree yeah. and still move on. Yeah. My point is, maternity and this whole conception is a bit of the elephant in the room and it's about time we start talking about the elephant. Completely agree. There are so many women, Radhika, so many women, <coughs> we discussed this in the break also, who are now talking about freezing their eggs. And it's fantastic. Yeah. It's fantastic because at least it's there's, there's nothing to hide about it. It is actually scientific. If fertility is moving earlier in the curve, 
फ्रीज योर एक्स सो यू हैव ऑप्शनैलिटी ओपन फाइनेंस में भी वैल्यू ऑप्शनैलिटी राइट दिस इज ऑप्शनैलिटी प्लीज डू इट आई थिंक इज ग्रेट आई वुड एडवाइज अ यंग वुमेन who's 21 and ambitious to please go do this absolutely because it will save you pain later in life i have so many i'm 36 so uh. all my friends are 36 37 35 36 37 all of them the ones uh. who have not been able to conceive uh. are now going through it or up pain ho raha hai uh. and each of them says the same thing ki tumko ladka mile na mile uh. tumko tumhara jo kar lo yaar free your ex 15 din ka procedure hai khatam jaake kar lo so and then it's a great fail safe hai na and it's is actually younger women are getting a lot smarter And, and I'm happy to see that. I'm happy to see that people are speaking about it and making their choice. But tell me one thing. I'm going. I'm going to ask you again. Wait, slide. Hmm. Do you think giving options like giving loans easily, hmm. giving Zomato swiggy easily, hmm. giving freezing eggs hmm. easily, does it prevent people from adulting on time? No, no. I you don't cook for yourself. Huh. You don't invest right. No. So this and is. And now you're. This now is just a choice that your body is making. It's right? not in the same realm. It's not in the same realm. you know you are going to live a, you don't know at 20 how your career is going to pan out over the next 40 years 20 years you don't know how your love life is going to pan out over the next 20 years but you know that there are biological limitations of your body yeah. so you're just making a process much easier it's like is it better to start getting healthy at 40 or at 60 yeah for sure it's better to start getting healthy at 40, 40 for right sure. for sure it's not the same analogy No, it's it. a choice. It's a very logical medical no, I get, choice. I get the hedging. I get the hedging. It's argument. not even hedging. It's just a logical medic. It's an option open to you. But does it? That's what I'm saying. Everyone says raise money for a bad day. Mm. You raise money, mm. but it comes with bad habits. But this this doesn't come with any bad habits. It doesn't put pressure on you to time what might be best for you physically as a woman. No. If you want to, huh. if you want to, no. Anyway, by the way. so much ivf conception there was a whole movie made akshay kumar made one movie on this it's called good news good i i watch a lot of bollywood movies <laughs> anyway this has become very common so you know is that a good thing or a bad thing that's my question it because is the the fact that it has become co- common is yeah. the effect it's just of a, a social cause right no it's not a social it's just a need it's a biological need it's like Now they, in the old times you used to eat only घर का खाना ना now you eat बाहर का खाना होता है ठीक है now cancer is more common a certain amount of pollutants <laughs> fertility has come down you have help it's like it's technology right any use of technology it helps it helps a woman's body for sure no I agree by the way I agree with my friend completely कि young young age में when you have when you are fertile etc it doesn't matter what your life hmm. path is huh. at least get that done so that when the time is right and again it's a choice was i'm not saying everybody has to do this and a lot of people don't exercise that choice i am again saying bring the conversation in the open so that you make conscious choices in- informed informed choices are very important this is not something to hide that is that's that is so true that is absolutely true and I have not had this chat this candidly huh. anyone. I, I'm surprised it took cameras and lights. There you go to have this chat, and it doesn't even affect huh. me directly as much. Huh. But I'm sure there are women in this office, or there are women who are watching for whom. So I wasn't they, they, they to be fair. Be I mean, I, 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 I don't feel great about this. I wasn't as aware of this till two, three years ago. I mean, miscarriage and stuff is things I've gone through. But even something like postpartum, until I joined these women's WhatsApp groups, these mommy WhatsApp groups. I mean, they've actually taught me a lot about just what people go through and how they find solace in those WhatsApp groups. Yeah, yeah. You know, so and education also, right? I'm assuming that the people just tell you twenty thousand things. Oh, people are know. super. So I'm one of the most mean people on those groups because I don't contribute anything. Okay. I just don't have time, but I seek a lot of help, and I'm forever thankful to those mommy groups uh, because. They contribute. It's almost like a silent sisterhood that goes on, on those like one year after conceiving groups. Yeah. And did you go through this with it? Did you? It's it's great. It's a silent sisterhood that exists. Amazing, amazing. But uh, uh, mommy second time round or is he just stopping it? No, no, no. Well, one kid <laughs> and uh, he takes a lot of time. Yeah. He takes a lot of time. No, that's amazing. Uh, talk about being a CEO. Talk about. <laughs> talk about. running a company running a fund running huh. being responsible for so many people's capital at such scale yeah. i cannot imagine the pressure of delivery of being at it or being your best every day 
as mm. a ceo of that right but you do it with with a certain amount of effortlessness that i must commend mm. because you know you you come across as a really chill person your public persona is very inspiring to people mm-hmm. who follow you who want to reach out to you but uh, i'm sure uh, the duck that is peaceful at the surface is paddling hard underneath right so talk yeah. about that a little bit i i think you got it right i think managing so people always say oh you went from managing like 4 5000 crores in assets to 1.2 lakh crores and these are huge numbers right? yeah, absolutely. and i say it's not my money right it's the, the it's managing public money that is that's a sense of responsibility and it's not with due disregard it's not 1.2 lakh crores of institutional capital it's Ridden. capital of lakhs and lakhs and lakhs of ordinary indians who would have put 100 rupees 500 rupees in fact i was having an interesting discussion on on the shark tanks it's and someone was like so we all come from consumer businesses and you run a fund and i was like people forget that mutual fund is as much a consumer oh, business sure. we have lakhs of consumers and they are not one time consumers who bought a mug from us or a cosmetic product we want to make them like see they what have they bought from us they when you buy a fund you just buy a promise yeah when you buy a cup a mug you've seen the product on the internet you know what you're going to get when you buy a shoe you know the size maximum it you know everything yeah what on what it might be painful to walk and all but even that you try when you bought a fund you bought a promise and many times for reasons out of my control yeah. i may not be able to fulfill that promise so essentially when you bought my product all you said is i trust you i trust you radhika i trust you it was mutual fund i trust you with my money and so you're selling trust and i think that is the realization as a ceo the managing my personal money is very easy yeah. managing public money or what and people write yeah <laughs> they write you know i saw especially in the last few years because i'm publicly visible i saw one of your talks you inspired me i'm starting an sip for my daughter that is stressful that is really stressful um i think the result is that as a ceo i've tried to make life very simple i think we can make mistakes in business we can expand too fast but we can't make criminal mistakes with people's money so you know the way we manage money it almost has to be like singapore airlines very processed very drama free very boring we just all i say is i don't want to make gross mistakes because yeah. gross mistakes are very expensive you can give a little less but you don't want to make major mistakes that's that's the constant objective uh people talk a lot about brand in consumer businesses brand is perhaps far more important in financial services because as i said what do you sell you sell trust yeah you only sell and you compete with people who are not new age businesses but your competition is state bank of india who has a branch on meghalaya border <coughs> the people cannot even pronounce edelweiss and don't know if it's edelweiss or edelweiss or whether it's a swiss company or an indian company yeah well that's the thing right i think in your case right the more i think in my case i said a shaving razor or yeah. cream the person uses smells nice ra- shave acha gaya kabhi kat jata hai kabhi kuch ho kat jayega gali de lega agli baar nahi lega repeat right मेरे भी तो उसने मुझे पैसे दिए हैं यार तो पैसे दिए हैं एंड योर परफॉर्मेंस इज कांस्टेंटली बीइंग एवैल्यूएटेड द पर्सन माइट वांट टू एग्जिट एट एनी पॉइंट एनी डे सो यू वांट एंड यू गेट व्हाट्सएप अलर्ट्स एवरी डे ऑफ माय परफॉर्मेंस एंड माय 40 अदर पीयर्स हु आर माय कंपटीटर्स देयर परफॉर्मेंस इज आल्सो देयर एवरी डे सो आई एम रनिंग अ हॉर्स रेस विद माय पीयर्स एवरी डे एंड डिलीवरिंग टू योर कंज्यूमर एवरी डे फॉर अ वन टाइम परचेस आल्सो या एवरी डे फॉर अ 100 रुपी वन टाइम परचेस आई स्टिल एम रिस्पांसिबल एवरी डे एंड बाय द वे I have to treat a 200 crore investor the same way I treat a 100 rupee. Investor. Are you able to do that? Absolutely because we manage the great thing I think our regulation does that. We manage pooled money. So when I manage a fund of 1000 crores no special uh, treatment. There's no special treatment. You pay the same fees. And I have investors who are 100 crores and I have investors who are 100 rupees and they get the same treatment from me. The fund manager manages money in the same way. Very few things in India are as democratic as we are. and you get the same communication and you get the same ex- uh, access and if there's any change you have to get the same information but effectively i am a big seller of trust it, that's a pretty hard thing it's to damn sell. hard it's a hard thing to sell when you don't have a famous last name when you don't have a bank so 
it's a very difficult kind of startup heavy is the head that wears yeah, the yeah i don't know there's a crown and i i also say i think being a ceo is a great sense of privilege so the ability to reach out to that many consumers distributor it's amazing so the, there's only gratitude for it yeah there, there literally is only gratitude for it as i mean to like building out a company they were 24 25 selling it then big and by the way you are one of the very few people who has stayed back in the home which you found for your company yeah. and then became a ceo that it's not marisa mayer is another example of that i think yeah marisa mayer is another one um mithun sant chetty of carrot lane carrot sold it to tata, tata group, yeah. and people always say acquisitions are bad and sales are bad and actually people told me it'll always will eat you up and lala and all that nonsense it is all hogwash right and that's why i said they they this the the line between owning your own company building in another institution it's really all a state of mind but radhika the statistically they have not worked you have made it work because yeah. and that's an exception more than it is a rule so perhaps I, kudos to you and also to the edelweiss management at the time oh. to be able to kind of integrate a business maybe i don't know i don't know the nature of the acquisition as mm-hmm. well but i think for example in consumer businesses it's very hard to integrate other brand into a house of brands for example yeah so acquisition and like the consumer business and then there are sales targets and no, it they, is rare yeah very hard shantanu no, it is rare uh, i i think many people don't realize edelweiss is actually a clutch of entrepreneurs we have so much i have taken the boldest bets of my life in this business without having to ask for any kind of approval so it was entrepreneur to entrepreneur and that's what you you look I think the a true partnership that is and that's what the conversation at the acquisition was that this is not a sale it's a partnership and I think if you look at acquisitions like that you can create great value I like quoted Carrot Lane as another great yeah. example of creating value yeah but it comes from Mithun's I love the guy by that I he's a wonderful guy phenomenal yeah. entrepreneur but it comes from his very strong majority to be able to create value for both the acquirer and the, and, and his own company right yeah. and kind of figure out how does it comes from a sense of lack of ego okay this is there's honestly the events of this is i don't know if i should say that the the events of open ai tell you one thing nobody lives a life even if you are a founder where you don't have a boss everybody today has a customer <laughs> a regulator and an investor right Yeah. Everybody is accountable if right. Correct. So there's no belief that this is everybody has a board. Absolutely. If you're building anything meaningful, you have to have stakeholders. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't believe nobody anybody lives a life without stakeholders. Correct. 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 I know we're over time and we have to get let you to go get back to Remy, but uh, Radhika people who are watching, you know, young men and women um hopefully who will start sips yes please <laughs> uh, start sips who will start sips but i think also as as you know uh stars in their eyes a little bit right uh, looking at people like you achieve so much in so many spheres and uh, being so generous with your wisdom but um, any last words of mm-hmm. and by the way i'm this is uh, i feel like you know after there are some some guests with whom i feel like i have you know i i have i, have, I think i have kind of covered the gamut of wisdom yeah. in some meaningful way with you i don't even think i've scratched the surface uh-huh. so this is i think part one of hopefully a, a multi part series but on this any any last words of advice for for people watching the last words of advice uh, they could be long list of advice or i have no one to give advice i always tell people to live a life that they're proud of i think and we started with being contrary and about india <laughs> but I, i genuinely feel very grateful that i grew up or i'm building yeah. in this india and it's in india that gives you opportunities to build in whatever canvas you want it's not the doctor engineer lawyer wala iit jaoge to kuch banoge nahi to kuch nahi ho sakta i think there are opportunities everywhere so i think find your sky and then learn to fly it these are lines from limitless but i i really think find your sky take the time to find your sky and then fly and know that everybody has different wings um and flight is also the other thing is flight fly a marathon yeah don't fly a sprint yeah. if you're young 
you have time on your yeah. side, right? Yeah. So, and you have time to compound. So don't be in a rush to fly, yeah. fly, fall, drive. <laughs> but go on a long term flight, na? fly, fly somewhere meaningful. Uh, that is, uh, find your sky and then learn to fly. Amazing. Radhika, this has been an absolute privilege for me to get the best seat in the room. Uh -huh. But uh, we will invite you again at, uh, you know, at, at, at a time that is convenient for you. Well, I think there are a lot of topics, especially on younger generation investing, on women who want to be moms in the workplace, uh, which I would love to talk to you in depth about as well. Uh, but thank you so much. This has been an absolute privilege. And uh, uh, look forward to all the amazing things that you're going to do in the future. Thank you. Wish you all the very Maybe best. Maybe in the next one, I will give up my sari and wear jeans yes. so that I can <laughs> sit like super comfortably oh, with sure. my feet up. We'll actually ask the team to collect like, two couches think, yeah. and we can like no, So we should lounge. do bean bags or like yeah. something cool because I've never done a conversation like that. So we should do that. I hope you enjoyed today though. I did. I really did. I awesome. really did. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Take Thank care. You.